Hello everyone. Today I'm show you how to keep and brush it for inputting data and have all the summary to be appeared on a separate brush it by using pivot table. So this is our table for input. We have date, item, and quantity. The expected outcome will be on the separate brush it here on the monthly summary. We want to look at a particular month by selecting the month. When we click the fab, we will see the sales data by ported by date for February only. And we can do it for every single month. Now, when I click on April, I see nothing because in my data set, my last record is up to the end of March. So what I want to do in this worksheet is when we have new data, coming in. I want this data of April to be automatically appeared on the summary page like this. Let's see how we can do it with pivot table, timeline, and a single line of VBA code. Let's start from the beginning. The first step is to convert the range of raw data into an Excel table. And this is very critical because an Excel table will expand automatically. That means it will include new data when you append the new data at the end of the table. Let's do it. Select anywhere of your data range, go to Insert Table. And the shortcut for this action is Control T. Now I confirm the range and confirm that my table has headers. Okay, now it is an Excel table. I can see that on the ribbon, we have a tab of table design. Here, I can rename it. So let me rename it to data. Go to another worksheet. There is a blank new worksheet. So I go to insert a pivot table here. For the data range, just input the name of the table that we have just created, which is data. Okay, so we see the data field here. I can simply drag the date to the rows, item to the columns, quantity into the values. So now I have the summary by date, by the item in the cost tab. What I want is to summarize the data by month. So the next step I'm going to do is to insert the timeline. So I go to the pivot table analyze tab here. Insert timeline. Select date. Okay. There we go. Super easy, super simple. So I extend it a little bit to see all the month in the timeline. Yeah. I can also adjust the range here so everything will fit nicely. Now when I click on Jan, I see the data for Jan only. When I click on Feb, we see the data for Feb, March, and April. We have nothing yet because in my data set, I don't have anything for April. So what if we have new data for April? Let's just jet to append to the end of the table. On the pivot table, I don't see anything for April until I refresh the pivot table. Because one of the limitations of pivot table is it won't refresh automatically when you have something updated or new data coming in to your source data. We have to do the refresh manually. This is not ideal, but we can overcome this with a single line of VBA. Let's see how to do it. Hey, VBA, I have no idea about VBA. I don't know how to write a single code. So what can I do? Actually, I'm not good in VBA either, but what I will do is I will do a macro recorder and then I will copy the code that I need. This is not super complicated. Let me show you how. The first step is I have to activate the macro recorder. So I go to the developer tab. 
In case you do not have the developer tab, go to File, Options, go to Customize Ribbon. Make sure you have the developer check here. Okay, so now I'm going to the developer tab. I'm going to start to record a macro. So just name it macro for it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now whatever I do on my workbook will be recorded in the recorder. So what I'm going to do is right click on my pivot table and refresh. And I'm going to do one additional step. I'm going to go to data. Here I have to refresh all. I will also click this I button to perform another action. Refresh all. Okay, now I'm done with the recording. So I'm going back to the developer tab and then I will stop recording. The next step is I want to see what I have recorded. So I go to the visual basic. The shortcut key is alternate F11. Here, in case you do not see the VPA project, go to the field and make sure you check this project is full. Now I have seen it, so I just go to the module one, double click. This is the line of code that we have recorded. We see that this is the macro four is the name of the macro. We have th three nine. The first one is the action of right kit on the B8 cell. The second action is on the active version, on the pivot table called pivot table three, I refresh the pivot catch. The additional action that I performed is to go to the data tab to refresh all, and this is the code, active workbook refresh all. Actually, I will copy this line of code instead of the second one. The key difference is on the second one, we have to hard code the name of the worksheet and the name of the pivot table. Indeed, the macro is smart enough to give me the active sheet, so I don't have to worry about the Russian name. However, I have to worry about the name of the pivot table. But on my second action, if in this case, I'm not dealing with a lot of external connection, I'm not dealing with a lot of pivot table of different data source. So I'm quite safe to use this action to perform the refresh. So what I'm going to do is I copy this line. Okay, now I go back to rush at sheet number two, where is my pivot table is. So I double click on it, I see another windows. Okay, so here I will see that rush it, and here I will see that activate. So that means when this worksheet is activated, do this action. And this action is to refresh the current workbook. Okay, I don't need this. So now I'm basically done. If you want, we can actually remove this module one because we are not going to use it. We just want to borrow the code from it. So I'm going to remove it. I don't want to export it. Here we go, I can close this, I can close this. Now let's see what happened when we have new data of made. Let me jet and drop the data of made to the end of the table. Now I'm going to shift one and I'm going to click on May. See that I didn't need to do the refresh manually because it is done by the method. Super. So now we have the flexibility of selecting a single month. And also we can select a range of month. We can even change the intervals into quarter. So we can select the whole quarter easily. Yeah, if you want, you can select down to years or down to days.
so that you can see like a range of things. This is simply awesome. Mm -hmm.